there's people that walk up to me and ask me, you know, why are you all smiling? Why do you smile? Well, it, it ain't really mean being happy sometimes. It could just be the joy of the Lord, you know. And, and that, that gives me a chance to just tell them who I, who I am and why, you know. But that, that gives, it, gives me a chance to say it's all about God, you know. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear the final part of Julius Tuhart's story. Julius was once an angry man, and when he turned to God, things didn't all of a sudden get better. He still had battles to fight and choices to make, but he was a new creation now, and with that came change. Well, I got a DUI that summer out there, and I went to jail for about 15 days. And then uh, these college kids came to see me while I was sitting in jail, and they wanted to pray for me because I still wasn't a Christian. And I don't know, it started getting to me because I could see the difference. Uh, there was something about them that was different, you know, that the love of God was showing through. There was something about them that was finally getting to me. God was finally breaking through this this wall and hardness in me because I was really rebellious and hard. And uh, and my understanding is um, all this time these people are witnessing to me and telling me Jesus loved me well. They they explained to me that then I started finally understanding what they meant and they told me that Jesus came here and died for sinners. You know, he died on the cross because of the human race because. Uh, rebellion and uh, sin, that we, we needed a Savior, we needed a spiritual life, we needed, we, we needed to be born again spiritually. And I, that, that was one thing I had a hard time understanding when they said I need to be born again. And uh, they said, and the Bible says it. And that's when the Lord said, opened up my eyes to that, that that's what it meant, that I needed to be born again. And because I was lost, you know, I was lost and I needed salvation and 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 Jesus provided that when when he came to earth and died died on the cross for our sins and uh I don't know that that year September Labor Day weekend Larry Lunsom Crusade was up there in that chapel and and that night when they gave the message of salvation I was all torn up I I was really hurting that night and I knew that when they gave the message of salvation that I needed it, and there was no doubt I would accept it. You know, I went up there and accepted the Lord, you know. The Spirit of God was really moving because in my past I've been resisting the Lord, and that night, for some reason, I mean, no, there's no doubt about it. It was God's timing, you know, that I walked up there and accepted the Lord, you know. I meant it in my heart. I was serious. I knew if I died, I, I wasn't assured of going anywhere. And I and the Lord convicted me that night that that was the only way salvation. The Bible, the Word of God says in the Bible, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so whoever believed in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. That was what um, what I believed. I mean that that's what I did at the crusade. I accepted that that truth. When I walked out of there after giving my heart to the Lord, I I. I didn't really feel nothing different, you know, feelings. Like I know that we can't go by feelings, you know, that we think we're saved. Then when we're feeling bad, we don't feel good. I felt like I wasn't saved. I, I wasn't going to heaven because I didn't feel good. Well, I, I really, you know, that's what happened when I gave my heart to the Lord. And I, I started doubting right away. I was doubting. And that's one of the biggest obstacles right away in my, when I first gave my heart to the Lord was doubting. And then that's what really just led me back. I, I, I needed to hang around Christian people. I needed that fellowship, but I didn't do that. I didn't do what the Bible said right away. I wanted to just do my own thing again. I mean, I just, I was doubting, you know, until seven months down the road, you know, I was rebelling and I ended up in jail for terroristic threats, and I knew I'd be sitting in jail a long time. And uh, uh, after two or three days laying in a jail cell, after my drunkenness had all uh, went away and I, I sobered up real good and my came to my senses, well, 
Well, there was a Bible in my jail cell, and I was in there alone one night. And I was, that third night, third or fourth night, I was in my jail cell. I just, I was talking to God. I said, God, are you real? You know, why, why, why am I still a drunk? Why, why did I do this? You know, and I, then I remembered in the Bible that the old prophets in the Bible are people in the Bible were. Some of them were killers, and some of them did kill someone, and God still forgave them and used them. Well, I, for some reason, that came into my head that night, laying in a cell. So I just uh, I just cried out to God that night. I just, I said, God, if you get me out of here, you know, I, I, I made a promise to God that I would follow him. You know, I would do what the Bible says. I would do what I'm advised to do by Christian people and, and uh, walk as a Christian, you know, and... Uh, and I and I was really sincere in my heart, and I, I was going on faith. Then I mean, I I, I just went on faith, and uh, <laughs> the next day, the, they dropped the charge of terroristic threats. You know, and uh, I believe God answered my prayer that time. I really believe in my heart up to today. You know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I was I still had these old feelings. I mean, God didn't instantly hate change my my health or my mind, my way of thinking. When I became a Christian, I still hated myself. I still, I was still lonely and I still hurt and I was still angry. I didn't know how to love. All I knew was uh, a hatred, I guess. That's all I knew. I knew how to hate. I mean, but well, how could I love a person, you know, and because of all the resentments ever since I grew up as a kid, all those childhood memories, you know, there was no love, you know. That that was really traumatized my life, and uh, as an adult, man, it was just it just came right out, you know, my hatred, my meanness, and my I didn't know how to love. The only love I understood was having sex, you know, and I and that's what I thought love was. It didn't satisfy me, you know. My relationships were all went down the drain, you know. I was really um really a hard person to get along with. I was always blaming. I was I held um. Well, yeah, it was true. I, I, I was racist too. I, I, I didn't like white people. But after I became a Christian, the Lord just opened doors, and the Lord started revealing slowly of who He was and what He can do. And uh, the more I put my faith and trust, and the more I, I did that. As the years was going by, I, as a Christian, I, could, I could see, and, and I was convinced. And I was convicted of things that I wasn't doing the way God wanted me to do it. And if I only did it His way, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be so hard on my life. I wouldn't be uh, blaming other people for my my the situations like like jobs or place to live or relationships with other people. You know, uh, the Lord helped me to deal with the past and to. Uh, to ask for forgiveness, there's times that I had to tell people, oh, especially with my family, my mom and dad and brothers and sisters, that's the most important thing after I became a Christian. Right away I was convicted that I needed to tell them, I needed to show it, that what I believed in, I believed in the Bible, I was a Christian, and I, I did that, you know, and I, I had to tell my mom and dad, I asked for forgiveness and I forgave them. And that's where I just left it, you know, and I trusted God that that He would deal with it after that. And uh, that's the farthest I could go. There's nothing I could do, change the past. And I and I felt comfortable after I did that. And and as a Christian, we're we're gonna have these spiritual warfares. We we're gonna wanna do go back to our old lifestyle. I do things that in our flesh, but as Christian people, we have that power. God has given us that power. Because the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us, you know, and uh, we got the God's power to just cry out to Him and and uh, say Bible verses are yeah, use the Word of God against all temptation. And I've learned to do that, and I can see how powerful God's Word is, you know. And uh, I, there's been healing in my life, especially uh, emotional healing. I've learned to uh, to love other people. I'm learning to uh, forgive. There's times, even as a Christian, it was hard for me to forgive. But I learned to, I was, I was real prideful. And that's another thing in my life. As 
God hates pride, and I didn't know that. I mean, I, I was always prideful, and I could do it on my own, and I mean, I don't need prayer. I don't need Christian brothers, but I have learned that I need them, and uh, God sent them here for me. And uh, and when I confess it, and, uh, I, and I, I learned to be humble like Jesus was when he walked on earth. When he was humble and didn't retaliate when uh, people said and hated him, well, I mean, that's what he did. He is humble and be He came here to love people and to forgive, you know, and uh, and that, that's what I'm learning. And that's what I can do now because God has forgiven me and for my sins and and I have to turn around and forgive any other person in my life. And I've done that and uh, it has really helped me in my walk. When I think of Jesus... Uh, Taking my place and dying for my sins, man, and uh, I, 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 it's hard to comprehend anyone dying for you, and uh, it took me a while for me to really understand the meaning of Christ's death on the cross. The thing that really touches me is that he did, he died on a cross unconditionally for me, and paid my penalty. And I, I could never ever find anybody else in the world to do that. I don't know, by by the miracles and the things he performed on earth and as a human. Uh it's I don't know, so sometimes it's just uh, it's hard to I mean it ain't hard but uh it it just gives me encouragement in my walk. The Lord has done things that in my human strength I couldn't do, man. I, I'm just blown away some days that you know, I I can't help but rejoice in God, you know. And uh, when people can tell you they see the joy of the Lord or they could see God in you, well, that, that makes it more worthwhile. I mean, that just gives me that joy that that's inexpressible, you know, because uh, I, there's people that walk up to me and ask me, you know, why are you all smiling? Why do you smile? Well... It ain't, it ain't really mean being happy sometimes. It could just be the joy of the Lord, you know. And, and that, that gives me a chance to just tell them who I, who I am and why, you know. But that, that gives, it, gives me a chance to say it's all about God, you know. Julia's story is just another reminder that what God says in the Bible is true. Listen to his words. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's Julia's story. How about you? Has anyone asked you recently, why are you always smiling? Maybe you don't have a reason to. But if you are forgiven and loved by God, like Julius is, and if you'll follow Jesus down life's road, regardless of your circumstances, you too will have plenty to smile about. That's because there is nothing in this life that satisfies apart from being right with God. Are you ready to walk humbly with Him? Do what Julius did. Put your trust in Jesus and obey God. You'll be amazed at what He does. If you would like to know more, please visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. You can also find us on Facebook at Without Reservation. Want to take the storyteller with you? Be sure to download our app. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.